Welcome to Meeples on Meeples, episode 66. I'm Adam. I'm Brian. Andrew. As usual, before we get into our game of the week this week, we just want to invite you over to our Facebook page, our Twitter account, our YouTube channel, and our website, meeplesonmeeples.com, where you can follow along with all of our reviews and the activity that we post there on a weekly basis. Our game of the week is Sons of Anarchy, Men of Mayhem, based on the award-winning show Sons of Anarchy about the motorcycle gangs, and each player represents one of the gangs, and you'll get a player board, for instance, if I was the Mayans, i get this player board, and then you have your little blinders so that nobody can see your money, your guns, and your, uh, what's, what do they call these? The, the contraband. The contraband that you keep hidden. Um, and then your player board kind of tells you, you're starting, you start with on the, the base game, each person has five cash, two guns, two contraband, you're at one level of heat, uh, three gang members and two prospects or wannabe gang members. And uh, this basically kind of tells you your turn order and it helps you with other things too. It's a nice little player aid. And then on your turn, you can use actions. It's an area control game, as mentioned here, um, to go to different parts of the city. And you want to go ahead and explain the action points, how they work? Yeah, action points in the, again, the basic version of the game or the unleaded version of the game, as they call it. Everybody gets, each round, three base orders or action points. Then you get one order or action point for every member you have. Those are the guys on the bikes. Uh, so you can, I think when you start the game on the base game, everybody's going to get six action points or orders uh, every round. And then as you add on members or promote uh, prospects to members, you'll get an, addi an additional action point the next round. And you can have up to five members. Exactly. There's five motorcycles of each so color in the game. Five actions is going to be your top. Or actually eight because you get the eight, base. Sorry, yeah. So on your turn, you usually can spend one action. And the actions consist of spend one to move as many guys from one location to another. So from your base, they stay on your player board, to one area of the city. You can spend one action point if they're already on a, an area and there's nobody else there to utilize whatever ability that building offers you. So for instance, at the cut and bag op, um, if I was on there and there were no other rival gangs on there, I could spend one money to get one contraband. I could do that a maximum of two times. Um, or I could swap two guns for three contras band, and I can only do that once. And it explains everything right on the card. And the one instance where you can do more than one action per round, well, there's two, two cases. One is when you exploit or you utilize the power. Some of the locations have a boost. You spend another action point or another order, and you can also do the boost action. Uh, the other time when you can do two actions is when you have a throwdown at a location. If you want to explain that, maybe. Um, let's say I'm going for the, the cut and bag op. I want to get some, some contraband here. Um, and we'll explain why you would want to do that later. Uh, and Adam's doing the same thing. So I'm purple and he's red. The, you each get your own die and everything. So then we're going we're gonna to have a throw down here. Okay, we're both standing here. I can't use it as long as he's here. So I can spend it. Actually, we're going to have a throw down. We're going to fight. At that point, you add up the points, the number of guys you have. If you have... And there's three steps actually to the throw down. Yeah. You, you, you call for backup is your first step. So the person that does the throw down... He can bring in people from other locations. Again, paying an action point to bring more people in. So you, you, you burn through a lot of action points when you have a, th you know, a fight yep. or a throwdown. Then you can decide whether you want to throw in guns. If you have any guns behind your, your, uh, in your clubhouse, you get an extra three points towards the throwdown for, for every gun. For every gun you spend, and yep. they're used up after that. And you can only have one gun per person. Per person in the fight, yep. And then the third part of it is you then roll, or what is it, get bloody, I think is what they call it. And you add that. So the bikers are worth two points each. The prospects, prospects are worth one. They're the guys just standing up are worth one each. You add up all of your guys, and then you add in three for every gun you have in the fight. You can choose not to have a gun, and then you add whatever you roll. The winning team um, sends the other people packing. If you use guns for every gun you use, they lose a member to the emergency room where they might die at the end of the round. And you also and, take a heat. And you take a heat because you use guns. Yep. For a regular throwdown, just punching, you don't take heat. Um, and then everybody else who wasn't killed or hurt by a gun goes back to their, their player board, their base of operations. Now that that's open, then I can immediately spend another one. So you can spend a lot of action points. Of to call it, to bring guys in. Okay, I can spend another one to use utilize this base now that I, I own it or run immediately it. Immediately after the fight. Immediately after, after yeah. Turn. Um... Boy, that kind of kind of covers it. You know, the 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 board is slowly revealed. You only have a few at the beginning, it, and the, each round two more are added. Yeah, the base game starts with five locations, and then you add in two uh, each round until you're out of locations. And there's was talking yeah. about the cards over there, maybe. Uh, these cards. How many do you get? Is it nine? It's, it's 15. fifteen cards. Fifteen cards total, and then every round you flip out three new ones, and these give you 
specialty things. Like this one says Midnight Run. It's an opportunity to sell a gun, get two money with no limit. It's so a temporary it's, location. It's, yes, it counts yeah. as a location. If it's a last call, at the end of the round, the last call takes effect. Some of the last calls, gangs gain, gain heat for each location with three or more of their dudes. So it might be a bad thing. Like, oh, i got to make sure I spread my guys out before the end of the round or I'm going to gain a bunch of heat. Or this last call was uh, gangs with no heat get an extra four cash at the end of the round. And then there's another example of another one of the cards is a hassle. It's usually, you know, like the cops getting involved and they prevent mm -hmm. you from doing, like in one of the hassles was there was no black market phase. And that's a phase I guess we didn't talk about. At the yeah. end of the round, you can when sell. When everybody's out of action points. Yep. There's like a like an auction, so to speak. You right. can sell contraband to get money. The more contraband that's sold, the less money that everybody gets out of it. But the hassle card in that case prevented the contraband or the black market thing. Right. Nobody could do it. And you want money because those are your victory points at the end of the game. Yeah, it's it's six rounds. You go through all 15 cards that you drew. Once those are gone, the person with the most money, money wins the game. Right. Um, and there's other rules, but that pretty much does a pretty good job of summarizing and giving you a flavor. For and, it. and again, that's the base. There is a high-octane game, which has a few different rules for specific to each game member or game itself. All right, let's talk about the components. Uh, first off, each, you get like a player mat. It's double-sided for both versions of the game. Super durable cardboard, yeah, too, not just paper. It's awesome cardboard. Um, In fact, all the locations are, too. They remind me of those really nice, thick coasters. You pointed mm -hmm. at that yeah. game, And that's actually what they kind of look like and feel like, but they're um, they're really nice. They really are. You know, and I'm, I'm kind of a stickler on card quality. These actually are not bad. Um... They're standard size, thank the yeah. Lord. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not a fantasy flight game, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, the quality, they're not, like, super duper, but, you know, we've played this a few times now, and, you know, the corners aren't bending and things like that. It's pretty nice. All of the artwork is thematic. You know, the anarchy symbol on the back of the cards, they use screenshots from the show, so you have to have the actual actors, actual locations and places from the show, so yeah. you might get a little more out of the show, or out mm -hmm. of this if you're a fan of the show. But it's just they, they did not cut any corners as far as right. utilizing well, that artwork. These, the little contraband bags, I mean, they're little bags. And like the guns, guns, they're all plastic. And each die for uh, each for the six. gang or club has the six of the symbol of that particular yeah. group. And, and I, I like the fact, and it's the same this company did, Spartacus, did Firefly. I like the fact that they use the photos from, I mean, mm -hmm. it could be cheesy, but I think they do a really good job of using pictures from the, the property to, to convey the story. And they are pretty consistent with their rule books. As far as components go, the rules are well written, very clear and concise. We consulted them a couple of times, but they made sense. They answered our questions quickly and easily, and there aren't extra... You know, you're not flipping through tons of unnecessary pages. I think the only thing that would be bad in components we found is they maybe don't give you enough of some of the extras, like cash. In one of our games, we kind of ran out of cash. Uh, but that's something I guess we can get into more in likes and dislikes. All right, let's move on to our likes and dislikes. I'm going to throw this out there. I'm a huge fan of the show, as I know Andrew oh, is too. Totally. And um, I immediately went into it pretty excited because the theme comes through really well. You're trying to control areas of the town. You're exploiting and using the areas that you recognize from the show. And the bonuses that the areas give make sense with what they did there in the show, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. you know, Where you can sm sell guns, smuggle guns, why you would go to the emergency room. Um, and it just it's very thematic, and it, all, it clicks and makes sense, which also helps you understand your turn order, too, I think. Yeah, when, yeah. when the theme, like, oh, I'm doing this because this would happen next, and I don't know, it just makes it all come together nicely. Uh, I, I'm a fan of, and we've talked about this in past episodes, I like player mats. Uh, these player mats are nice. They give you spots to put like the heat and stuff. You can't necessarily stack all your things on there, but they also give you your little player tent that I think is great. That You put all your stuff behind it. And what's nice about both the player mat and the player tent is they give you all the rules, what everybody's worth, and the throwdown, uh, the round summary right there. And they even have some of that same stuff on the player mat. So, I mean, you have no excuse for not knowing what's going on. It's, it's all... Even without looking at the rule book, you can kind of play the game. They give you the round layout for you. You could probably glance at the rule. This is a definite like. Glance at the rule book and then start playing and just go through the rule book because it explains how to do setup and what to do each round. And you could be playing real quick right out of the box. Yeah. It might be a rough, slow game that first time, but after one game, you're in. Yeah, I, I actually really like the game. Um, not only am I a fan of the show... I am a motorcycle enthusiast, so it just it adds 
that for me. You know, it's like I've been riding my whole life. I love watching the show. It just I can get into the theme really well. And with the pictures and all that, it's just it brings it really out for me. I've, and we don't have them out uh, the miniatures, which we'll of course put little pictures and stuff in the video. You'll see. Um, but the miniatures are pretty Andrew nice quality. <laughs> yeah, and like Andrew do that. No. But they're no, they're pretty good yeah. quality. Um, and again, it's it's thematic. Color they're, coded. They're, too. Yeah, they're color coded yeah. with the the die with the player boards. They're all color coded, so it's cool. I guess the only thing that I didn't like is that, uh, like the what is it, Lynn Syndicate and the One Niners are not necessarily motorcycle clubs. Yeah, but not the, the show. Yeah. But the characters are still on bikes. On bikes, yeah. like. It would have been nice if maybe they'd made like generic little, miniatures. Like little, is what no, they are. Just, so, no, but that's what they are. They, yeah. Everybody's motorcycle right. is a different color, but they all are the same mold, the same character. Right. Thing. If they, I mean, even if the mold was the same, but like made little cars for the people that drive cars versus, yeah. you know, I know it would have cost more, but it, I think it would have just added a little more to it. it that and trying to figure out who's who when you got nine people. <laughs> oh yeah, when when you have three gangs going from one place. I mean, I know there's really colors, but they all kind of. It's hard to, I mean, at a distance, it's hard to count how many around. Right. Yeah. Um, it kind of mentions already as a dislike. I don't think they maybe give you enough of some of the extras, like the cash. Um, you can run out of that, which the rule book's not clear on whether you're out of cash at that point or you do what we did. You just sub in other other uh, items for the cash. Yeah, but and just so you know, this is not all of the cash. No, it's oh, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> we just want to give you a nice feel for what there is in the game. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe this is a dislike. I, I don't know. It's the fact that the game... Uh, it plays the same all the time, and maybe this goes back to like the the Firefly game where mm -hmm. they had different scenarios. Right. This doesn't really have a scenario thing. It's just it's a what do you call it? like a location? It's an area control. Area control game. Straight yeah. up area control game with a with a little more aggressive violence. It does it well. So I mean I don't know if that's really a dislike, but well here but here's something that does help alleviate that is again this is not all of the locations. Yeah. The city will get about this big. We kind of threw this out for the review, but there's a whole pile over here, and there's. There's tiles that you won't see and there's a until whole, several games in because you kind of pull them out at random and shuffle them. Same with the cards. Anarchy cards. There's a whole deck of them. Yep. You only use 15 per game, you know, and, and there's tons of extras because here's the 15 here. So you will be playing several times and be like, oh, we haven't had that location yet. Oh, that's going to change my strategy a little bit. So. And it is a potential like is this game is like a lot of their games expandable. They could add in... Like you mentioned, there's already gangs they could add in. They could add in more anarchy cards, more mm -hmm. locations. Absolutely. And kind of build on it that way. So let's talk strategy. Um, I mean, this game is all about really... <laughs> it's hard to explain. You, you start out the game, at least on the unleaded round, completely equal. Mm -hmm. Totally even Steven. One thing I found is helpful, and you can go about it, I guess, one or two ways. Either growing your gang, buying those extra recruits quick, or promoting those prospects to members, I think is really helpful. Because the members are the ones that really help you out. They give you more right. in the throwdowns, more, um, it, they're, they're just more powerful in the game. And the more, well, the members give you more, um, more actions. More actions to begin with, too. Yeah. So, yeah, you really want to promote your, but you can only have five. But having the prospects in, you sure they only count as one point instead of two, but they do help in throwdowns. So, yeah. so, yeah. That's, that's kind of a basic strategy. I guess, what do you guys think on strategy otherwise? It's it's all about the money, baby. I mean, that's those yeah. are your victory yeah. points. And so sometimes it's, it seems like, wow, I spend the cash to get a contraband. Is that really worth it because I'm spending a victory point? Yeah, but when it comes time to the black market or the open market, whatever you want to call it, if if a lot of contrabands sold, they're only worth one each, and you're going to break even. But if not, and nobody else has any contraband that they can sell because their heat's too high or that they want to sell that round, and you sell... And you're the only one selling. You're getting three per contraband. It can really pay off. So you have to kind of gauge how much does everyone else have as far as contraband. How much do I want to sell this round versus hold on to later? It's all so. about the cash in the end. But you're right. You do have to buy the contraband and the guns. And for instance, a perfect example of that here is you spend one cash for one contraband, but then you can jump over a round or two later to this one here, sell one contraband and get three cash for it. Oh, you know, I don't know if we mentioned this, but once a place is used for the round, it's used. Nobody else can use it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing is you'll find if 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 you take too long to jump around, what do I want to do? And you're wishy-washy. People start using up the locations pretty soon. You'll have action points, and there's nothing you can do about it. So don't be afraid to, also, to plan ahead and say, you know, i got to get over there, and i got to use it before somebody else gets on it. Otherwise, there's a throwdown, and I lose more action points. Yeah, yeah. So you really got to decide, where do I want to go? And, like, do I need to go lose heat? Then i got to go there, and i got to use it right away before somebody else can challenge me or use it before me. The other thing about that, though, is, say the Suns are here and the Mayans are here, Neither of them can use that spot 
they have to, you have to be there alone. They, they have, have to have there. that throwdown, yeah. So you either have to have a throwdown or somebody has to move or whatever happens, but you have to solely be there. Another strategy that we've definitely figured out after our first game, you know, because with any game, the more you play, you figure stuff out is... Bribery. Is you don't go back... Yeah, you can... We'll talk about that in a second. But you do not go back to your base of operations, your clubhouse, at the end of the round. They so if you out. have guys over here and over here, they stay out on the field, assuming there hasn't been a throwdown, they haven't gone to the emergency room or anything, you know, in a shootout. So sometimes, yeah, I may not be able to use this position now because it's already been used up but if i can get my guys there and start the next round there maybe yeah. i can use it right away yeah this one for example you get three three cash for every time you exploit it i, mean, I this won the game for me last I time mean, even if it's used up make that your last action jump like five members over there mm -hmm. so when you start the next round nobody else is going to go after it actually this is this one's really good too yeah so the one, one per you... member so if you have all five bikers on there at the beginning there and use it up before anybody else five cash but easy money brian's right get to those locations so you set yourself up for that next round yeah, at the end of the previous round. It's, mm -hmm. We really figured out that that was a huge saving grace. You but you elaborate? had a great point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't... The first time we played, we didn't really utilize it much, but you can make deals between each other. For, and, for cash, know, contraband, and guns. Make deals. Right. So Or just, just gentlemen's say, agreements, too. Yeah. Like, I'll just right. back off and let you have that if you let me have this. And no money exchanges hands. But yeah, I mean, that would be very helpful in terms of, hey, I'm about to throw down with somebody... Somebody got a gun because I don't have one, and I really want to win this location. It, it does encourage us in the game, just like Spartacus, and it also encourages backstabbing, saying yeah. you're gonna help somebody, right. and then like yoink and screwing them over. Yeah, there's no nothing that says you gotta stick by it. Yep. So yeah, I mean you could trade any amount of you know, be like here's one contraband for one gun or five or however you want to make your deals. And that's very thematic because they're always backstabbing each other and getting mm -hmm. screwed over by other games. And you can and make clubs. those deals at any time. It doesn't have to be your turn. So say right. somebody else is doing something, you kind of have an inkling that you're going to need to jump in and stop them at some point, you can start making a deal with the guy next to you to maybe jump in next round and take care of that. And from our reviews of Cosmic Encounter and Spartacus and all the things, you guys, you know we like games with table talk <laughs> and, and, well, we just like to screw with each other, to be honest, so. It, that's, uh, yeah, I think we underutilized that the first game, mm -hmm. and I think that can really kind of make or break, break the game for you, too. Uh, anything else on strategy for you guys? No, just definitely plan ahead and keep an eye on what's out there and, and try to keep a track of what other people have as far as money because at certain times maybe I'm not going to be able to get money this round because all of those spots have been used, but I can stop somebody else from selling something if I know that Pat's been hoarding guns, for instance, and he's trying to sell yeah. them. I can jump there and contest that position. I, and I um, would, so you have to be very defensive, too. And one strategy I put out there, and I didn't do this too well in the games we played myself, <laughs> I'll say. I, I, would, I would hold on to at least one gun so you mm -hmm. have that extra plus three when it comes to a fight because there's a lot of times people like pat for instance would sell all of his guns and you could jump into a fight you might be equal with members and prospects but it's nice to have that trump card of all right i got three plus on top of you before we even roll so like i did when pat made me mad because he used that card that i wanted to sell so i <laughs> so came yeah. in with my four guns that i was gonna sell <laughs> and just annihilated him so it's I'd, I'd hold on to a gun just so you have that extra ability All right, let's talk reviews. Our reviews, for those of you that have watched, know it's 10 is great, 1 is terrible. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in and say I'm going to put this game at a... I'm going to put it at an 8, actually. I had a lot of fun on it, and, and one thing that really helps it is jumping into it for the first time, the rules were super clear. We didn't have to go back to it. It was easy to get into. There's no you know stopping of the flow, going back to the rule book, or trying to figure out what's going on. It just it works really really well. Um, the components are really good. The, uh, the artwork for what it is being photographs. I love the player mats. Uh, the rules being laid out for everybody. It just it plays really really well. I think. I mean, the only thing I might like is like I said, maybe having scenarios or having some maybe a little more of a goal added on top of getting all the money. But other than that, I it's just it was a fun game. It was easy to get into. I felt the theme of it, even though I really haven't watched the show all that much. It comes across really well. Um, and I like the games where you kind of, like you said, you have the table talk, you work together. Uh, it's just these guys, when they do these... And what's the, the company Gale again? Force 9. They do these licensed games, and we've talked about this in the past, coming from video games and stuff, which have gotten better. But licensed games, you know, a lot of times you go in thinking, uh, is it going to be great? 
they just they knock it out of the park every time they do it. These games just they work really well. They you can tell they really care about making it like the the source material. So an eight for me. Um, boy, <clears throat> you know I'd probably go a seven five. Um, you know I'm pretty sure there's an expansion coming out that makes the the Grim Bastards Club uh, a fifth player. And that might be just enough to bump it up. The only reason I'm a 7-5 is we often have five people. It took me a long time to get this game to the table. Mm -hmm. I've had it for a few months, and everybody's like, yeah, I want to play it. And Andrew was really pumped about it. But we always had five or six guys coming over. So, you know, a lot of gaming groups, you know, have more than four people. So that's a slight detractor. You know, with the motorcycle gangs and the contraband and the guns, not the most family-friendly thing again. So I have little kids, so I'm not going to go play with them a whole lot. Um, you're not going to break that with Granny unless she's a big fan of the show. There are biker grannies. Um, but the game itself is very solid. It plays pretty quickly. I think our first game was about an hour and a half. It says 90 minutes on the box, but you can cut that down yeah. as you become more familiar with it. Um, but I, I, I'm all about theme, and the theme is, is here. And I love it in a game when the decisions you make or the options you have tie into, yeah, I'm a member of a motorcycle club. That's what I need to do. Why do I need to do it? Because of this. And it all just clicks and makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's a solid 7.5, and I can maybe be convinced with a few more options or an expansion to bump that up, because I do like it a lot, and I kind of want to give it that 8, but it's, I don't know if it's quite there for me, and I, I don't know if that's fair to say or not, because the components and everything else are great, Yeah. but it's, it's a very good game, and it's definitely worth getting. I'm going to go with a solid 7. Uh, you know, I love the show, but... Like Brian was saying, it just seems a little limited. There is, I mean, a lot of options. Obviously, there's, you know, tiles we didn't use the first couple times we played it. and I mean, there's more expansion, but it just doesn't quite feel like you're being chased around. And, you know, you're... I wish there was more of, like, a, you know, the cops are chasing you type of deal. Or the cops, you know, some sort of aspect of that. Or instead of just automatically getting heat if the police could actually... Like... Maybe you'd have be to be more interactive or something. Yeah, like, you know, make your heat up to ten or something, and you got to roll for it. Expansion or... idea. Right. Fifth player is the heat, and right. they have their own hidden agenda. and They get points for scoring. Right. Totally off the top of my head, but that could be kind of um, cool. Otherwise, the game. I mean, it's there's nothing I found that was broken about it. It wasn't easy just to get this much money over somebody else, and you know, I mean. There's a whole bunch, and it was a lot of fun, but I just wish there was a little more in-depth to make it actually feel like you're part of a club and you're doing these deals. But uh, when it comes down to it, I mean, the quality of everything is amazing. I mean, it's just great. So I'm just giving it a solid 7. Maybe an expansion and bring it up to 8, 9 for me, maybe. I don't know, but we'll get there when we get there. And, and that's the good thing about Scum. They've been good about, they do expansions for these kinds of games. Right. So you know have, something's coming down the They've at least two or three for Spartacus and they have many for Firefly. Yeah. They have many from tiny little cheap expansions up to bigger box ones, yeah. Uh, that's our review of Sons of Anarchy. Check back next time to see what we're reviewing.